Hello and welcome back to the lab. So today we're going to hopefully finish up work on the 3456A that was reading out of spec on the one volt range. Um, we had narrowed the problem down to a uh, defective resistor array chip. This is U200 on the A20 board. Um, so I placed an order for a replacement and the replacement part is come in and here it is. So let's get this voltmeter opened up and drop this part in it and see if we can't finish up this repair and recalibration. Okay, so I've removed the top cover and the inner guard shield. And now by removing the, uh, the two nuts that are on the standoffs on this chip, I can remove the chip and uh, put the replacement in place on those standoffs. Um, I mentioned in the last video that it's not a good idea to touch these, any components within the high, high impedance part of this board with your bare hands. Um, um, it's best to use gloves and I still don't have any gloves. And so I'm not going to touch it with my bare fingers because they may uh, degrade the high impedance circuitry and uh, cause more problems than I'm solving. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, get in there with my needle nose pliers and uh, pull this chip off and drop the replacement in place without actually touching it with my finger. Okay, just carefully lift up the circuit board. I mean the uh, the hybrid chip and uh, we can remove it without even touching it. Hopefully, come on. You can do it. There it goes. And we'll drop the new one into place. Just push it down so it's properly seated. We'll get those nuts fastened back on and uh, it should be good to go. got the unit button back up and put back up on the shelf plugged in and turned on we have to let it warm up for at least 30 minutes uh, I'd like to let them warm up for an entire hour because there's some small drift that happens during that warm-up period and we want to make sure we get past that drifting phase of the warm-up period so that they're nice and steady um, I've got it up on top it's the upper voltmeter is the one we're working on along with my other two six and a half digit meters, the 3456 in the middle and the 3455 at the bottom. Both of those meters read almost exactly alike. And so I can assume, I'm just making an assumption here that they are both extremely accurate. Um, none of these meters have been calibrated in, in at least 25 years. So uh, there's no way for me to know for sure. And I don't currently have a DC standard um, to do the calibration with, a traceable standard anyway. I do have a, a means of generating uh, accurate voltage, but it's, it also hasn't been calibrated in, in decades. So I don't, I don't really know. But I'm just going to assume that the, the middle voltmeter here, um, which I've always believed to be the very most accurate meter I have, I'm going to assume that that one is correct. And so we're going to make the upper one um, come as close as possible to that one when I do the uh, realignment and uh, performance test to do the calibration. Um, it's not really a traceable calibration. And uh, I need to warn you, if you're working on your own voltmeter and you start messing with those adjustment pots, you may make the situation worse. If you're not really sure what a volt is <laughs> exactly, um, you might make the situation worse. So please don't start readjusting your your meters just for the heck of it. Um, uh, send them out for, for a real actual calibration to get them uh, certified traceable. Um, that's the only way to do it. Um, I don't really need my voltmeters to be that accurate, so I'm just going to make the, the two 3456s um, read as close to one another as I can get them to do that.
All right, so let's let them warm up for a little while, and then we'll begin the re readjustment procedure. Hmm. Well, uh, bad news. It seems that we have not fixed the problem. Um, I guess my thinking was not correct. Huh. The same symptom still exists. See, on the top voltmeter, after warm-up, it reads about 50 counts low, and it's turned up all the way, and it won't go any farther. On the 10-volt range, reads just fine. One-volt range still reads the same. Um, the same exact symptom as before I swapped out that hybrid chip. So, um, I guess my thinking was not correct on this one. Um, gee, I guess I'm going to have to rethink my, uh, my uh, troubleshooting process here. I'm going to have to take a look at some other things inside that voltmeter. See, I put it up on the shelf already, buttoned it all back up, and I was ready to... Uh, I was so confident that it was fixed, but it, it is not. It's still broken exactly the same way. Got a little bit of drift. Let's dial it up a little notch. Yeah, it reads about 50 counts low, and it's turned up all the way. I haven't even a had a chance to uh, re uh, realign it. Oh. Well, I guess this is going to have to do it for this episode. I'm going to uh, stop the video here and uh, try to see if I can't do some, some more troubleshooting off camera. And I'll come back with another episode when I've got this thing figured out. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned. Maybe I'll get it fixed in the next episode. I sure hope so. Thanks for watching.